Hi, Donna Guest here, Creative Memories Advisor and Lazy Scrapbooker. I want to show you one of my favorite page ideas called the Block Layout. The Block Layout is one of my favorite go-tos for completing a page, especially when I have a lot of photos. It's pretty fast and it uses a minimal amount of supplies. It keeps the weight down on your album, saves a lot of paper, and of course, money. I hope this gives you a great new idea to use. First, let's collect all the items we need to make this page. I'm going to use plain white 12 by 12 Creative Memories album pages. And I'm going to pull out my current collection that I'm going to use called Christmas Spirit, which I have stored in one of our Power Project folders. I'll of course need a tape runner and my 12 inch trimmer and my photos, of course. Maybe my personal trimmer to trim photos and most importantly, a ruler. I like to use a clear ruler. This one's pretty old. I got it a few years ago as an advisor special with Creative Memories. And then this is our one we had this year. So any clear ruler you have, or if you don't have a clear ruler, you can do this with a regular ruler as well. So here are all the items that you can see in one screen of everything that we're going to need. I have chosen just one piece of paper from that huge pack I showed you of all of those items from Christmas Spirit. I'm going to use just this one piece of designer paper for this project. First, I've sorted my 11 photos that I'm going to try to squeeze into these two pages onto the pages themselves. Now, I'm going to take a moment and crop those photos. So far, I've only cropped out things that I don't want to be in the photos. Now, I realize I'm doing this the old school way and I could do this editing on my phone or on my computer before I order the prints online. However, that takes a lot of time and of course, being a lazy scrapbooker, I don't want to spend that time doing that. I'd rather just trim them because I get to use my personal trimmer, which is fun, but also it creates a variety of the different sizes of photos I have on my page, which is pretty interesting. So I'm just going to put this back here so you can see exactly what I cropped out. It was a TV, which I didn't need in that picture, and then the bottom of this chair that was, you know, unnecessary to be in that photo. So now I'll finish. Now I'm going to carefully place the photos on the page, and what I want to do is create a small border, maybe an eighth of an inch, but I'm not going to sit here and measure that. I can eyeball that to be an eighth of an inch, and so like those up there look good. And I want to leave little blocks of space where I can put the paper. So just kind of looking at how this is going right now, I don't really want anything that goes around a corner because it won't have the same look that I'm trying to get. So there's a little block there, there's a block there. Let's see, I think mission accomplished there. This is a page that does not require any journaling. That's gonna be on my page to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and attach these with my tape runner. I use the Creative Memories tape runner. I've got a couple here, actually a few. Um, this is the regular tape runner. It's got the clear cartridge. And then this one is the repositionable tape runner. It's got the green cartridge, and that one is good if I make a mistake and want to easily move those photos around. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use that. And it does become very permanent over time. Your photos are not gonna fall off the pages. Great, all done with that part. And my photos are carefully attached to the pages and are not going to fall off. Again, this is a great technique to use when you have a lot of photos and you want to get as many as you can on one page. It's a really quick way to decorate the page with very little material. Okay, so now comes the next part. I'm going to take the piece of paper I selected, which is this plaid from Christmas Spirit. Can I consider the other side too, which might look good. It's a little, little Santa hats. But I'm going to use the plaid because it kind of matches um, I think this room here, this tree here, kind of has that look with a lot of burlap and things, so that will look good. So now what I'm going to do is use my ruler here and measure exactly the amount of space that I need on this piece of paper. So I want it to match, get this out of the way, I want it to match the top of this photo in width, and that's obviously going to be what's just slightly under four inches. 
it, I ordered a four by 5.33 print, so it looks like it's just slightly under four inches because I did not crop this. I think that just varies um, with where I have them printed. Okay, so it's maybe a sixteenth less than four inches. And then the length I want, so I want to leave, as you see, a small border up there, and then about an eighth of an inch there. So it looks like one and an eighth inch by almost four. So now I have to remember that. And that's where this comes in, our wonderful trimmer, because it's going to measure exactly what you need. So it was almost four, and look, I've got those little millimeters, not millimeters, those little sixteenth inches there, they look like millimeters, um, that I can measure. So it was almost four by, and look at that, I've forgotten already, so here comes my ruler again. Oh yeah, one and an eighth. Okay, so I can look down here, and let me just zoom in so you can look here. Notice your trimmer has this wonderful ruler right here, right next to the cartridge, so you know exactly how much you're cutting. And a great tip is from this white line to the edge of your cartridge measures exactly one inch. So I'm going to use that knowledge and cut until the edge of my cartridge, let's see, gets to two and one eighth. Then I'll know I'm at one and one eighth down here. Okay, with my paper in the right place, I'm going to make that cut looking at the edge of my cartridge. Now I could go farther, of course, but hey, I'm conserving paper here, so that's good. And I'm going to measure to one and one eighth, and then cut down to just about four. There we go. And so my first piece is cut. Hopefully it fits. Oh, it's a beautiful fit. And now I'm going to use my tape runner and attach it there. Great, one piece is done, and it really doesn't take that long. I took extra time there just to show you that, so let's finish up the rest of this. Okay, now on to the next space right here. I'll do this one with you as well. So I'm going to measure again right up next to the photo because I want it to be the same length so that it matches it, and you've got this nice white border going all the way around it. So this one's going to be five and an eighth. I'm gonna write it down. <laughs> I think I need that. And then I'm going to measure to the left of this photo, and then just an eighth of an inch off. So it is just under one and a fourth. So I'm gonna put less than one and a fourth, and I'll know what that means. Glad I wrote it down, I have forgotten these already. So let's measure. Five and an eighth goes here, and we're gonna go just under one and a fourth. So on my trimmer here, if I use, um, look at the edge of my cartridge, the carriage, I can go to just under two and a fourth. Very good. And again, just under one and a fourth. I didn't realize this would have that much math. It's not really math, it's just remembering the numbers. And down to five and an eighth. There we go. And you can see I'm using very little paper, but it's gonna have a great look. So now I'll attach that with a couple of pieces of tape runner. It's all you need. Awesome. We have one, two, and three more to do. So I'll knock those out right now. For this tiny strip, which I think I cut just right, that was a tough one, I'm going to use the red cartridge, which is my mini tape runner. And that one looks like this. It gives you a little line here. Sorry for all the noise. I am a loud and messy scrapbooker. And there you go. I like the result of that. What do you think? The star of the show is definitely my photos, but they are accented by that really cool plaid paper from Christmas Spirit. Now I'm working on the left-hand side of this two-page spread, adding a title with Creative Memories ABC stickers. I'm using black script letters. And now I'll pick out embellishments from Christmas Spirit to fill the space next to my title. I'll open the Christmas Spirit Variety Mat Pack to find just the right journaling box to use. And now I'll place, crop, and attach photos, attach the embellishments, and trim the journaling box to fit the space on my page. And now my favorite part, journaling. I've got just one block to cut for the left page of this two-page spread, and then I'll be done.
Now there could be an argument that it would be faster to just wallpaper the page like you see here and you'd have color everywhere without the measuring and the cutting. Yes, that would be much faster. And while I love doing that on a lot of pages, this block layout creates white borders around your photos for a really great effect without having to add mats to them all. This was the 12 by 12 sheet of paper I started with. As you can see, I barely used any of it for two scrapbook pages. I love the results. It looks great and it keeps the focus on your photos and stories, which is where it should be because they are the most important. And this technique is so easy. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for being a subscriber to my channel. If you're not yet a subscriber, be sure to click the red button and subscribe to my channel so you'll see all future videos. Happy scrapbooking.